Remember, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Canuck Hacker videos are for entertainment and educational purposes only. Should you decide to embark on the project seen here, you do so at your own risk. Be smart and safe. Hey YouTube, Canuck Hacker here once again. Today we're going to be talking about taking garden sulfur that you can buy at the hardware store, getting out all the impurities and turning it into just regular plain old sulfur that we can use for other purposes. Uh, the primary purpose we're going to be using it for in a later video is how to make black powder. So pure sulfur, not the easiest thing to come by in all places, especially here in Canada. Garden sulfur, 8 bucks for 300 grams very inexpensive, very easy to, to get all the impurities out, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. This is the product that I bought. I got it at Canadian Tire. They also sell it at Home Hardware, probably sell it at Home Depot, Lowe's. I'm not 100% sure about those places. But if you look, it contains 92% sulfur. On the left we have our impure garden sulfur that contains a bunch of other stuff, and on the right we have our pure bright yellow sulfur. Alright, so now you're asking me, how do we go ahead and purify the sulfur? Very, very simple. What we're actually going to do is we're going to just take all the other impurities out and leave the sulfur alone. Very simple. The way we're going to be doing this is actually by using water. All the other junk inside a garden sulfur uh, should be soluble in water. Sulfur itself is not soluble in water. Um, there may be a few other things. I'm not sure of all the things that are in this and, and what their solubility is. Um, so there may be a few things left over. This might not be 100% pure sulfur, but it's going to work for our purposes. Alright, so to do this, the easiest method I've found is to get yourself a water bottle. Now, I've gone ahead and I've already purified most of the sulfur, so this container is actually empty. I did save a little bit so I could do the video to show you. So all we're going to do is get the sulfur into the bottle. So for that simplest method I know how, is with a bottle. I don't have one the right size, so I'm going to be using a sheet of paper. Take your garden sulfur, and remember this stuff is very powdery, so it will float up to the air, so just be careful about dumping it. Okay, once we've got all our sulfur into our bottle here, or at least everything that we didn't spill, we're going to go ahead and just fill the water bottle full of water. Once our lid's on good and tight, we're just going to shake it up. Alright, once you've got it shaken up and all the water and everything's in there, we're just going to let it sit and settle for a few days. So go ahead and set that somewhere where it can just settle and then uh, usually um, if it does start to settle and you notice that it's not like a nice yellow color at the bottom, give it another shake just to clean it some more. As you notice, some of our sulfur stuck to the bottom here. It's not the right color yellow, so I'm hoping that uh, the water will pick that up. If it doesn't, as we go along, just giving it a shake is going to help. Alright, let's set that one aside. Okay, so here's the one that I made a while ago. As you can see, we have all of our sulfur here at the bottom and we have all of our dark liquid up here at the top. Okay, so I've devised a very simple method of separating this out. Grab yourself a big bowl, set it in the center of the bowl, take a sharp object, and then you're going to go right about half inch above where your sulfur meets the water. And you're just going to very gently stab a hole in it. Now, not much is going to happen because water pressure is holding everything in place. So what you're going to do, is you're going to unscrew the top. Now the magic happens. Very simply, everything above the line is going to drain out of our bottle. Everything below the line, our sulfur, and a little bit of that water is going to stay in the bottle. I'll speed along. I'm going to very gingerly open up that hole a little more. You just don't want to disturb the sulfur that's on the ground of your bottle because you don't want it to come out with this liquid. All right, now you may have noticed we do have a little bit of liquid left on top here, right at our line. Now, if we want, we can very carefully try to pour some of this off. All right. And then on the first side of cloudiness in our water, which I have a little bit of right now, we know a little bit of our sulfur has escaped, so we're going to stop draining off our water. Okay, so our next step is pretty simple. 
we're going to take a mason jar. Here's going to be empty. Mine has a little bit of water left in it from when I added the water to our other bottle. No other reason for it whatsoever. And we're going to use our canning funnel and our reusable and disposable coffee filter combination. All right. So next we're going to grab our knife and where we stabbed our hole earlier, we're just going to cut a line all the way around the bottle. Careful not to dip down into the sulfur or to spill as we go. This isn't what I consider like super, super ultra pure. There is still going to be a little bit of our contaminants left in it because we let the water reach down. If you want really super pure, I recommend that you put this back into a new bottle, put more water in it, shake it up, and repeat the process that we just did, okay? I don't need it super, 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 super pure. This is gonna be just fine for me. So, we've got our sulfur mixed with a little bit of liquid, and we're going to just pour that into our filter. I should point out, the layer on top is really the only part that's contaminated. If you get down into this stuff, you can probably see the color difference. This is already pretty purified. Alright, you don't need to worry about getting everything out. I'm going to tell you why in a minute. The next thing we're going to do is we're just going to give this a little bit of a stir. Probably not best to use a sharp object. You want to avoid stabbing your filter, but I'm using a sharp object. And uh, then we're just going to add a tiny, tiny bit of water just to get rid of some more of the contaminants. Not much, just a bit. Now, you should know that the sulfur is going to clog up this filter horribly, so it's going to take a long time for this to actually drip through. So we're gonna set this aside for a couple days, or at least overnight, let that drip through and dry. Now, the rest of what's left in here, you can actually just leave this in the container to dry. It'll evap all the moisture will evaporate out of it. Once it's like, once it'll fall off the edges of the container, you know it's completely dry and usable. Um, and you actually don't need to worry about running this part through a filter because we can see how pure it is. This stuff here, once your filter is completely dried out, or once it's completely passed through your filter, there's not a lot of liquid left in there. We're going to open up the filter, lay it flat on some paper towel, let it finish dry, and then before you know it, you end up with pure sulfur or at least pretty darn close to pure sulfur. Once you've got that done, take a container that you want to store it in and store it away for future use. Simple as that. Once again, this has been how to take all the junk out of garden sulfur and get yourself some pretty close to pure sulfur. Check out my video coming up on how to make black powder. It should be a real blast. <laughs> I know, it's cheesy. Uh, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was really a simple video, but I did want to explain to everybody out there who can't just go out and get sulfur easily that you can still get it. It's not that hard to do. It's actually pretty inexpensive and pretty easy. All right? Like, comment, and subscribe. You'd be doing me a real big favor. Have a great day.